Oh, what? Look at the state of that pump track. I wanted to shred that thing, man, before hitting the trail. Ah, uh, no excuses though. We can still ride. We can still ride. I can see a few obstacles under this flyover that it's dry, apart from that bit over there, that we can actually learn some essential skills. So I'm gonna show you a few things that you can learn. If that is wet, you can still learn some tricks. I see a hip, I see a bench, I see some posts, I see some flat ground, it's dry. This is my essential skills that you need to learn. Well, Neil did an amazing video on how to learn. He got Tom, one of our creators, and he worked, because he doesn't know how to manual, but now he does because of what Neil's just taught him. And that tutorial is pretty cool. If you have a chance to take a look at that, I'll do a throw to that at the end of this video. But it's all about doing that L shape when you're doing it. You're pushing down, and then you're pushing your body weight over the back, and you're like pulling the handlebars to get the weight into that manual. It's quite a tough one to learn, it takes time, takes practice, but when you nail it, it's the best feeling ever because you're not pedaling, you're just lifting up that front wheel and you're gliding down, down the trail on one back wheel and it also can help you get over some obstacles as well. Well, this next one I struggle with. Can you guess what it is? Fakie, yes, I struggle with fakies. Now the best way to learn the fakie is on the flat ground or on a bank so you can get a little bit of speed. I'll show you on the flat ground first because you probably don't have a flat bank, but you probably have a flat surface. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the same pillar for this and I'm gonna ride towards it. Before I get there, I'm gonna hit the front brake, I'm gonna move that body weight over the front, get that back wheel up in the air, and then I'm gonna push myself back, let go of the front brake, let the back wheel drop, and then I'm gonna fake it, use that momentum to get myself into riding backwards. So the best gear for it is you don't wanna to be too hard because you wanna get some speed into it, but you don't want it too quick because if it's real easy gear, your crank's gonna be doing this going backwards. But if it was in a medium gear, they'd be going nice smooth movement back, not too fast, but not too slow. Right, if you don't have this sort of terrain and it's too flat where you are, there's a bank over there and a bank's a perfect place to just ride up it put the brake on a bit, stop, and then roll back down into that fakie. Right, this one's the stoppy, and I'm not very good at stoppies, so this is gonna be a learning curve for me as well. What I mean by stoppy is you're gonna use that brake to get your back wheel up into the air and ride along it on the front wheel. A bit like the manual, but on your front wheel, and you wanna be feathering your front brake. You don't wanna lock your front brake, you just go over the bars. And that's a bit embarrassing. I'm bending my knees, I'm keeping my body weight quite central still, kind of looking ahead, and I'm kind of feeling where that balancing point is in the nose manual, so I can, you know, feather that front brake, keep my momentum going through. Now this one is super easy, it's super simple, but yet effective when you get out of there on the trail, when it comes to some real tight switchbacks, this is gonna help you out. This pillar or post or whatever this concrete thing is to hold this road up, this is basically, if you go around it, it's real tight. This is basically gonna mimic one of those tight switchbacks on the trail. So the, the aim for me to do is to go around this pole, not to touch it, but not to venture too far out wide, because if you venture out far wide, it's like there's a huge cliff and you're gonna fall off it. So it's, it's a slow moving one and it's super easy, super fun. Do it both ways as well, so you can get used to going one way and then go back the other way. So, cause you know, the trail never turns right or it ever goes left. Only NASCAR goes left. Slow speed, you don't wanna go too fast. So you're learning your balance. Get as close as you can to the pole without touching it. Look at that, oh. Try to get your wheel to hug the pole. If you don't have a big pole like this, you can put bits on the floor. Look at that, you're learning, you're balancing, you're looking around your apex, looking ahead. You're not looking down on your front wheel because you want to see the exit of that bit of trail. So the great thing about having quite distance between each pillar is because you can pick up speed into that corner so you can get up to a reasonable trail speed into a tight turn so you have to use those brakes and then guide yourself around that turn. That's pretty cool because 
you don't just want to go slow around it because you'll get used to going slow. You want to go fast, use the brakes a little bit, and then go around that turn. Now, this one is cool because this is quite hard. So you could say it's a hard packed trail. But then look at this one. This one here, it's quite loose. So that's a loose bit of trail. You've got to think out the box, think, look at your terrain and see what will be the, you know, mimic what's out there on the trail so you can learn it here in a bit of a drier, drier environment. I'm going to go around the loose one, hard pack, loose pack, hard pack, loose, hard. Oh yeah, you can feel the front end moving in the dirt. Okay, when you're riding these turns, you don't want to lean back and just go around the corner like this because there's no control with your straight arms. What you want to do is when you're turning around it, you want to drop your bike. You want to keep your body quite upright and looking at your exit of the, t of the corner all the time, just like this. Right, that is the endo. And the most important thing that you need to do to do this, and potentially you could do it straight away if you take this on, is look at a point. If you look into where you want to go, you're basic, basically your back end is just going to swing around because your hips are going to be look, basically guided what your eyes are looking at. I'm going to look at this point right here, this plastic bottle top thing and my wooden stick. If I'm focused on that point when I turn, I'm literally going to do it. It's, it's crazy. Where you look is where you go. Now, when you're coming into it, you don't want to come into it straight. You're coming in a walking speed. You're going to turn your front wheel. As soon as you turned it, you lock the front wheel with your front brake. You're looking at that stick and your hips are basically going to come round and you're going to drop the back wheel. But you probably end up doing 90 or 45, then 90, then 80. 85, 70, all those weird angles until you get full 180. I'll demonstrate, but watch my eyes and where I'm looking. So I'm coming in, not too fast. I'm looking at my, and I want to point, turn my wheel, shift my body weight forward so I can manipulate that back wheel to come up. Still focusing on my point. Let my hips bring the whole back end round. You can use your, inner, you know, your thigh, everything, just to grip that bike and bring it round and drop it down. Oh, right. This one. This is probably the most challenging object in the area I'm in. This is the bench. Now, the key is to get up onto it and ride off it safely. A bit of trials. This can help you when it comes into a bit of a sticky situation out on the trail where you've got this step up and you need to get up it and you don't want to get off your bike. We're learning it here in a bit of an uncontrolled environment and at your own pace and not on a trail, you can do it right here on this bench. So the technique I'm going for is front wheel up, then the back wheel to follow, like that. And then, oh, and side hop off. Ooh, that's tech. So the technique I used here was front wheel first and then basically shifting my body weight up and over my front wheel by curling my feet on my pedals. I can bring the bike up and like push forward onto the bench. You can start small on a curb, which would be pretty good, but there's no curbs here. And this is the only biggest feature in this area, apart from the pump track. Let me do that again and I'll show you. So I'm coming in with a bit of speed, walking pace, front wheel and then back wheel and then off. So you want to do it at one solid motion. So you lift your front wheel up, you put it down. As soon as you tap it down, you push down on your back wheel, preload it and hop up using your hips and your, your feet to curl on your pedals. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, if you want to see more trials, because I want to, because my trials is appalling. If you want to see me go and visit a trials rider or a free ride mountain biker that does trials, Sam Pilgrim, let us know in the comments down below, should Blake do trials? Give us a thumbs up like, because I'm going to stick that comment below. If we can get loads of com like, likes on that, 100% going to go get a trials bike or just do it on my enduro bike. Don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad content. If you want to see another video, 
trail trials to the trail click just down here don't forget give us a thumbs up like and i'll see you at the next one see ya